Patience is not actually the duration of the wait. That is long suffering. Patience so is good. your heart posture during the wait. And so I've really had to test myself because there's things even this year where I'm like, come on God, <laughs> what's going on? Like, yeah. why are we behind on whatever it is? And again, God has just really put on my spirit that patience is the name of the game. So I am really happy that you are here and I'm so excited to kind of just get into our conversation. But before we do, I think it's really important to talk about how God even got us here because he's literally been steering the ship between the rescheduling, between all the different things to kind of get you here. Um, so basically a few months ago, right, I was working on the show, just kind of trying to plan everything. And I had a set guest list in mind, right? I had who I wanted to be on the show, when I kind of wanted to roll everything out. And before I actually submitted that to my production team, God kind of just tapped me and was like, wait, I haven't seen the guest list. You haven't even asked me who should be on this season. So I actually sat on this couch with my prayer journal and I said, okay, God, who do you want on season one? And you were the first name to pop up. And that felt like really random to me, not because we don't have a relationship, but you, I understand that like, you know, our relationship is not, you know, deep enough for you to even know what was going on with the show. You had no context to it. Um, I didn't even really know like where your relationship stood with Christ, right? So I was just like, God, are you sure? You know, he's like, no, alarm it. And he kept repeating your name over and over again. We had a call the next day. And I remember the first thing I said was like, hey, um, this is gonna sound really random. And the first thing you said back was, nothing is random when it comes to God. Yeah. And I was like, so God, you must have already briefed her. Like you must have already prepared her heart because you didn't even know I was coming to you with this show called God is My Creative Director. You had no idea it had anything to do with faith. And I was like, this is the right person. And now we're here. Yeah. And I'm so freaking excited. Yeah, no, it's definitely God ordained. And yeah. I think in that season of my life, I think I told you on the phone too, had you asked me, three months before, six months before, yeah. I think my walk and where I just was mentally, I wouldn't have been able to articulate how good God has been through this whole journey. Yeah. Like I knew it, but I wouldn't be able to speak to it in the way that I feel like I can speak to it now. So like you said, God is my creative director because we don't need to know the full story to mm -hmm. see how it's going to end up. We just have to just walk. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I know that when God spoke to me about you, um, I was like, well, what's the story that you want her to tell? And she, And he was like, Everyone has been asking her about topicals from like a business standpoint, a fundraising standpoint, which makes sense. You know, like the business that you've built is incredible, right? But he was like, I think it's time to talk about how her faith and my guidance has really contributed to the growth and su success of topicals in such a short time period. It's insane. And even like the woman that you are today, like you said a few months ago, you may have not even been able to talk about God the way that you will talk about God today. Where do we start? I, I feel like there's so many entry points. And you know, it's so funny because there's so many moments that come up in my mind when I think about God's grace yeah. and just my journey over the past couple of years. So I'll start with my journey to LA because I think that is probably the most, not random, but something that orchestrated or a moment that orchestrated and almost the story was written before I even knew what was gonna happen. So I ran track competitively in high school. Uh, fall semester of my senior year, I still had no idea where I was going to school. Mm. And so I remember, one thing about me, I'm gonna write a list and mm -hmm. I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna take action behind it. And I remember writing a list about places I could see myself for school. And I wrote down USC, I wrote down Cornell, mm -hmm. um, Baylor, and Kansas. So I visited those different schools and when it came to me going to go visit USC, I had reached out to the coach to set up a visit to, to talk about the school and I remember her telling me, I can't offer you a full ride mm. and so if anywhere else is offering you a full ride, you should go there. Um, and I appreciate her because being super transparent, right. I wanted to go to USC like forever. I, I We would go on family vacations to LA and USC was always a place where I was like, I want to end up there, yeah. LA. And I really didn't think too much about UCLA until after the USC conversation where I was like, what other schools are in LA that have a great program? And at the time I was pre-med or I wanted to be pre-med. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a doctor. And so one thing led to another, got a, a chance to visit UCLA and they offered me a full scholarship 
on the spot Look at God. when I got there. <laughs> and so getting that full ride was what really made me say, okay, LA has great weather. It's a good city for things outside of sports and outside of medicine. And it's LA, I've always wanted to be in LA. Right. So that's actually how I even got to LA. And where it gets even more interesting is my freshman year, I'm standing there with one of my teammates and a woman comes over to me and is like, hey, you all look like you do sports. My daughter is on the gymnastics team and you know she's like new to the school and I'm friendly. So I was like, oh yeah, let's like talk, right, like let's right. get to know her. And it's so funny because when we tell this story now, people laugh, one, because her mother introduced us mm -hmm. randomly, but also it led to a relationship that changed my whole life. So this person I'm talking about is Rochelle Dennis. Later came to find out that her father owned Shea Moisture. Mm. And I remember her and I got to be really close during our freshman year and decided sophomore year to room with each other. And just like you pulled out your prayer journal, she had a journal where she used to write ideas about what she wanted for her future. And this is, she, I think she told me she was around 12 when she wrote out that she wanted to start a brand like her father's brand, Shea Moisture, but for young women. Mm. And she'd always had this dream, but really never really knew how to manifest it. And when we met, she said something clicked that made her feel like we could do it together. Oh, wow. And so I, mind you, I'm Nigerian, yeah. I'm pre-med, I'm going to medical school. Like, right. I don't know about- This is just not on your Yeah, radar. not on my radar. I don't right. know about who sells lotion. I don't know how you get into stores. I didn't even know that existed as a way to have a career. I only knew that you could be a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. Literally, those are three things. I always tell people that. Like, I only had three options. Three, that's so it. So anything outside of that was not success to Yeah. <laughs> you know? Sales, creativity, even computer science at the time was not on the radar of Nigerian parents. Yeah. And so- her asking me to come do this, one was like, girl, I don't know how to do this. Like I, I've never, I don't know who sells soap. I don't know how to get connected <laughs> to retailers. Like yeah. I don't know how to do all the things that you would need to do mm -hmm. to become a successful beauty business. And then the second thing was, why do you think I'm qualified? Like what mm -hmm. makes you believe that us working together is gonna get this from point A to point B? Nonetheless, I was like, let's do it. So we flew to New York during Christmas, our sophomore year, pitched her dad. And the first meeting he was like, you're thinking too small. Mm. So come back and we come back to him with this plan about this brand called Shea Girl, which was based around seven different young women, which were her friends from, ele uh, from elementary and middle school, mm -hmm. her cousins, her sisters, and then myself. And basically we would each choose um, a skin condition that we were insecure about and we'd build a brand where it represented each one of our skin conditions um, and we would like that would be the brand. That is so clever. Yeah, and it was so so, so cool. And I love that he pushed us because you know sometimes people will just say yes to your first idea. But he's he's always been this is Richelieu Dennis. He's always been someone that makes you go deeper and think bigger about who you can be. And I think that's where real innovation comes is when you're pushed to connect disparate ideas to think bigger right. than you've ever had to think before. And so, long story short, we we launched that brand Shea Girl in the summer of 2016. So incubated the idea December 2015, mm -hmm. and then 2016 summer, we launched it at Essence Fest. Oh, wow. And so I learned everything about building a brand from my time at Shea Moisture. Mind you, I'm still an athlete at UCLA. I'm still an undergrad pre-med. Mm -hmm. So I was juggling those things and launching this brand. Yeah. And at the time, this was before student athletes could use their likeness and image. So I actually, Rochelle and I had to lobby to the NCAA, write a letter, present all this information about why we should be able to use our name and likeness to launch this brand with oh, Shea Moisture. Wow. And so we pitched to major retailers. Mm -hmm. I learned about finance. I learned about operations. I always say it was almost like a mini MBA, right? Mm -hmm. People go to school for two years to learn how to build businesses or be better, better business people. I learned that hands-on when I was 19, working under, I would say, one of the most prolific black businessmen, and really businessmen, period. Right. Um, so two years into running Shea Girl, um, it was going well, but it definitely was new to all of us. So it definitely wasn't a takeoff success, but we were really fortunate to be under the wing of Shea Moisture and mm -hmm. really kind of have that umbrella of success to fall back on. In 2017, which is fall semester of my senior year, Shea Moisture got acquired. Well, Shea Moisture's parent company called Sundial Brands, which mm -hmm. owned Shea Girl, Shea Moisture, Nubian Heritage, uh, Nikeo, a couple of different black uh, yeah. owned brands, was acquired by Unilever. Mm -hmm. And it was acquired for north of a billion dollars, which is why I say he's not just a prolific black businessman, he's a prolific period. businessman, period, because before then, there were no skincare, makeup, beauty type acquisitions north of a billion dollars. Wow. And so I think that grit and just that, 
he was so detail oriented. He was so particular about the stories that were being told at Shea Moisture. I took a lot from that experience and said that if I launched a brand, mm -hmm. and I, at the time I knew I wanted to do something, I just didn't know if I could right. or what it would be. Right. But I, I was forever impacted by that experience because I saw someone who looked like me create a brand that resonated with millions of people across the globe. Yeah, and during this season, before we get into 2017, where did you see God, like did you see God's hand in this? Like what was that relationship like? Like what were those conversations like? Like were you like, God, is this you ushering me into a, like a new chapter, a new season of my life? Like is this a pivot that you're pivoting me into? I've always been really like prayerful. Like I've had mm -hmm. a really, really strong prayer life. So I'm always praying to God with God. I don't think I always heard his voice mm -hmm. and maybe moved quicker than I should have in certain instances or decisions. But I always felt like, for example, in hindsight now knowing about topicals, I didn't understand at the time that the story was being written. But then right. when I launched topicals, people were like, it's almost like God knew right. that you were going to need that training to be able to launch topicals and it be so successful. Yeah. And so while maybe at the time I didn't fully connect all the dots, because there's a lot of things that also happened during undergrad that I didn't talk about. I lost half my scholarship after my freshman year because... Um, my coaches didn't believe I was, you know, like dedicated. dedicated yeah. I wasn't running the times that I needed to run. And this is before now scholarships are locked in where like a coach can't pull your scholarship. But at the time I missed it by one year. Mm. But I think about if my scholarship had been pulled, my attention would have been on trying to go to the Olympics, right. trying to be the best in my sport. And that situation really shifted gears for me on the fact that I wanted to control my own destiny. And I think that's what really pushed me to do the brand with Rochelle because mm -hmm. I said, you know, if I can't control my destiny in sports, I can at least try to control it in beauty and skincare, which is, I wanted to be a dermatologist anyway, so I was like, this will be good for my resume. My mom always says, add it to your CV. She, yeah, she loves to yeah, say yeah, that. Yeah. She said, it'll be good for your CV. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let me, you know, do this. And so I didn't fully understand the, the picture, right, that God was painting, yeah. but I felt like I was going where he was leading. Sometimes I think so much, and people ask me this, like, what gave you the audacity and it had to have been God in it's those moments because it like, just doesn't crazy. make sense. Like I think about topicals, the idea for it in 2018 and then what we are today. I didn't know that this is what was going to happen. Right. You know, I didn't know that it would blow up in the way that it has. And you would think that I did. And that's why I had that type of audacity, but I did it. And for two years, I lived a life where I understood that failure is very real. Like mm -hmm. this could not happen. And for two years, I was building the brand, pitching to investors. I pitched to over 100 investors. Everyone said no. Everyone said this idea didn't make any sense. You know, how are you going to get people to get excited about skin conditions when everyone wants to look perfect? Mm -hmm. Why are you going to show people with skin conditions? People are going to think your products don't work. If this is such a big opportunity, how did you figure it out and the bigger incumbents didn't figure it out? Wow. Basically, you know, like you, this young black girl, yeah. like how did you figure this out? And, you know, the bigger companies haven't figured it out. And so it was definitely a trying time of, again, going to church. I was in church every Sunday. I was tithing with the little money I had. I didn't have a job. Even if it was $20 on Sunday, I was like, I want God to know. And we, we talked about like, you know, what the prayer is. Yeah. And there's a couple of different prayers. But this particular prayer was, I never want money to use me. I want to use money. Come on. For God's glory. And so like, I always was like, I'm just going to tithe. Even if it's 10, even if it's five. Alamide, when I tell you that if that's all people hear, they will be so inspired because I, even listening to you right now has inspired me in more ways than you could ever imagine. The fact that God has given you this vision and has entrusted you with it and said, you know what? Alamde is my plan A. I don't have a plan B when it comes to Alamde. I don't have a plan B when it comes to topicals. This is hers, and I believe that she's going to be the right person to steward it. For me, that's the highest honor. I tell people all the time, I think there's a book or some sort of saying that, I don't know who it is that has said this, but ideas are like spirits. They land mm. on many. And I think that people, no, it, it's a, there's a biblical tie here too mm -hmm. because I, my dad has told me this story. I don't know who it was, but like God went to seven different prophets to do oh. a thing uh -huh. and no, everyone said no. And the first person that, or the, the person who said yes, mm -hmm. they were then like, God, how is this going to happen? And God's like, I've asked six people before you and you're the first one to actually say yes. So the mm -hmm. fact that you even said yes, like you said, I'll meet your natural with my super. Right. And so, um, that I feel like that's my story. There's so many records and rules and things that we've broken and 
I, I can't explain to you. There's no earthly reason for why this happens. And earlier this year, something I used to always say is that God doesn't operate in time or earthly logic. Right. Because if we look at the two and a half years, we're about to be three next month, what we've done... Yeah. Eyes have not... Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Alamdi, when I say that is like the anchor scripture for myself and this show, like 1C29, that's 1 Corinthians 2.9. Yeah. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Another thing that's really important, and my dad always says this, is like, as you start to begin to walk in faith and you begin to work, you will realize that the work that God is calling you to do won't be as laborious as other people are, you know, saying that it would be, yeah. you know what I mean? Or the way other people move. Like God would just make it easy for you. Yeah. It would just be seamless. My mom always says that. It's not that you won't have to work for it, but the way that you work will be so seamless. It won't even feel like a burden. I love you that know? you say that because maybe that's why the two years didn't feel like you know, maybe I should have quit. Maybe yeah. I should give up because I just There's felt like grace. that's what, yeah, there was a grace over it. Yeah. And it just felt like that's what I should be doing. No matter how many people said no, I knew that that's where God wanted me and he wanted me planted there. And so I just continued to do what he called me to do until the summer, right before we launched. So we launched August of 2020. Mm -hmm. This is literally July. I cannot believe it's been so like, it's, <laughs> it, like 2020 was what, three years three ago? Three years ago. That's yeah. nuts. So literally this month, three years ago. Okay, mind you, 2018 to 2020, I'm pitching to investors. I'm trying to get people to invest. And people are writing small checks here and there, but not enough for us to like really launch the brand. I meet an investor and within one week, she's like, yes. And they write me a check for $2 million. Nuts. How does that even, like, how That's does that happen? God. How does that happen? It, it, it's, it's just... And this is an investor where it's like they say no to everybody mm. and they only invest in the best. Like this, this is an investor that had invested previously in Glossier, Warby Parker, Casper. Like these are the household new age brands right. who saw me, saw my idea. And this is the same pitch I've been pitching to everybody else was like, this is brilliant. We have to do this. You know, and I always joke with her that like I appreciate her because I said she, she changed my life by writing that check. And she says, you changed my life. Mm. You being so successful allows me to continue to write checks into founders like you. You know, and so some people see it and some people don't. And I'm also grateful because the no's are really important because if I had said yes, or if those people had said yes to me, my journey maybe wouldn't have even been what it right. is now. I have so many friends who have investors who, yeah, maybe they wrote the $2 million check, but they're breathing down your neck and you're not able to do the work that you want to do. You're not able to build in the way God's called you to because you have this investor who wants you to do things a specific way. Yeah. So we also have to be okay with the no's and not harp on them too much because that door closed for a reason. You didn't yeah. need to go through that door. And I think sometimes we're, we try to force our way. Right. We're into so fixated on yes. the no because we think that our plans are higher than God's. Yeah. And God literally says that my ways and my thoughts are higher than yours. Exactly. So just trusting him. You know, my mom always says that every disappointment is a blessing in disguise. Yep. The fact that like your track scholarship got pulled or, you know, it, they took half of it away. That was a blessing, even though in the moment it felt like disappointment. Yeah. Because if you went to USC, maybe you would have met Rochelle Dennis and God is, it's just so many things that so intentional yeah. and I think even hearing your story reminds me of the moments where I have been disappointed and I've been so fixated on that yeah. like God why didn't that work out but when you zoom out you know hindsight's always 2020 20, right you you realize that God has been faithful this entire time God is on your team he he wants to give you plans to prosper you you know like he wants to exceed your expectations and I think that as believers we need to do a better job of just like trusting God even in the rejection trusting yep. God in the delay and reminding ourselves that he sits at the throne he has the bird's eye view yeah you know hit the beginning the and middle the end, the end yeah. has already been laid out my dad always reminds me of the scripture it's Ephesians 2 10 and it says that we are God's masterpiece created for good works that he created a long ago that we may walk in them Ooh. like everything that God has for us has already been done. Yeah. We are just walking in it. And yeah. like, you know, again, Vic says, it's like we're just catching up to his plans. That's all this life is. Yeah. You know, so it's so beautiful to hear your story and to hear about all like the detours and the shifting and everything that led you to be who you are today. And it's crazy because you haven't even scratched the surface. What does that feel like? <laughs> you know, 
talking about this idea that it's already been written has brought me so much peace because there's mm. things in my life that have occurred even from the success of topicals like there's things that I've lost there's opportunities that I've missed out on where I don't have to sweat it because I know that at the end of the day he has plans to prosper Come me on. and I think that grace that favor that peace we were talking about peace earlier right that surpasses all understanding it almost allows you to be a better creative be right. a better business person because you don't spend 80% of your time worrying about why X, Y, and Z didn't happen. Right. You're just focused on what is happening. That's the privilege of knowing the Lord yeah. and knowing that he's on your side. Which and is why people keep saying like, oh, you go from glory to glory. Yeah, I can go from glory to glory because I'm not worried. I'm not anxious. And I'm not saying that I never had a moment where, and even now, where I'm like, God, like that was supposed to work out or this didn't work out. Why didn't that happen? I definitely still have that. But I just go back to the word. I go back to being in the spirit and knowing that it's okay. Right. Like it, that wasn't for me or maybe it is for me. It's just not right not now. Right now right. And so we talk about, there's a lot of prayers that I prayed during this time. Um, one that I prayed was like, God, don't give it to me too early because on, I may man. lose it if I get it too early. Like prepare me so that when it comes, you I can am, sustain I can sustain it yeah. because I, I think that's one of the worst things is to get a glimpse or to have something and for it to slip out of your hands because of your own stubbornness because of your character. and experience. Yeah. yeah. So that was like one of the main prayers I also prayed was, please don't give this to me until you believe that I'm ready. Yeah. And when it happened, I was ready. Right. And maybe I didn't understand and know everything because you never will, but there was a peace, a grace, a favor at that time. August of 2020 is prime pandemic. That's prime nuts, pandemic. man. Like that is, how did you guys launch in the, God. Literally, because it got pushed back multiple times. Mm -hmm. August, we finally launched it. And even August when we launched it, Faded, which everyone knows smells, it has mm -hmm. a little, she has a little funk to her, but it's because- She works though. She works. She works though. And I'm not gonna say <laughs> it works because it smells, but we don't like to mask any part of the potency of the ingredient. Mm -hmm. So we're not gonna put a scent on it because that might irritate your skin. We're not gonna do anything to alter things because we really want you to get the efficacy. And so I remember we had worked on at least putting a deodorizer on it so that it wouldn't smell. Mm -hmm. We had approved a formula and we were, I was like, okay, great. This is gonna be amazing. Mind you, I had also decided that I hated the packaging. I thought it looked <laughs> terrible. Yeah. So again, in my head, I was like, I don't know how this launch is gonna go because you know we're having this issue with smell, but okay, we figured out the smell. Packaging, okay, look, when we printed it, I was like, okay, it looks good. I'm okay to launch with it. Maybe we change it in the future, but right. we launch and um, the products come in and when they scaled up the batch, the deodorizer didn't match up to the scale. Oh so goodness. it smells awful. Yeah. And I'm thinking it's over. It's over before it even started. Like this product smells so bad. No one's gonna wanna buy it. Everyone's gonna think X, Y, and Z about it. Again. God doesn't need me to think about everything or no, about everybody because else. He already gonna, knew. He already knew. He was he was already in the details. And I always tell my friends that the things that we go through aren't surprised to God. At all. He's already accounted for it. He's yes. like, baby girl, don't worry about that. I got that. Focus on the main thing. Exactly. And it's yeah. so funny because now faded being smelly is actually a selling point on people saying that like it works so you know it works so good because it smells like right. this. And this is something that I was like People are never going to want to buy us. You know, I hated the packaging. The package, we've won awards on the packaging. That's one of the reasons why people love us as a brand is because of the packaging. So again, don't get in your own way thinking that you know everything. Again, right. pride doesn't always look like boastfulness. There was a scripture. You're dragging me. There's a, there's a scripture <laughs> that I was reading in, the devo in my devotional yesterday or two days ago that a lack of trust in God is actually pride. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, ooh. You're dragging me. Yeah. Like I was like, okay. ooh, that's, that's, because again, we look at pride <laughs> as like, oh, I think I'm better than you. A lack of trust in the highest power that exists, that's arrogance. Because you, do think, you think you're God? Yeah. You think that you know what's going on. Right. And so for me, that's why I try my best not to even worry about situations because I don't know the full script. I don't know what God wrote. I'm just a character in the story. And I don't want to say what the prayer was at the time, because mm -hmm. I want us to end with that. Okay. But a prayer for me right now mm -hmm. is, God, I want sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. I pray that alone. That's crazy. Sensitivity to the Holy Spirit, because I need to be able to hear. There's so much going know. on. I need to be able to hear what it is that you want me to do. Because if I can't trust my own gut, I need to be able to have some sort of like guide. And so... Obviously, the world, we get really cluttered about what we should do, what we shouldn't do, social media, people, our parents, like everyone's, you know, opinion about what we should right. do. And so my prayer for the year has been increase my sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Right. Make me slow to speak. Make me eager to listen. Like that has been, because I just can't trust myself. No, we can't. I can't. 
And that, that's where like humility comes in, recognizing that you are not in control. And I think that is why topicals and you have been doing so well because you're following the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, allowing him to usher you, allowing him to lead you, allowing him to give you the wisdom and the genius. Because one thing I pray is like, God, give me your divine foresight. You know, like I don't want to ever operate in hindsight. Like I don't want you to give me the insight that I need. I need you to give me the foresight that you have. Like the yeah. Bible says in that first Corinthians two, it also says at the end, it says we have a mind like Christ. Yeah. And I'm like, God, you have given me your mind. You have given me your perspective. Give me your habits. Give me your, give me everything that I need in order to do the things that you have called me to do. Yeah. I don't want to operate from Buku's mind. Yeah. I don't want to operate from Vic's mind or my bot or whoever it may yeah. be. I want to operate from the mind that you have given me, which is yours. You yeah. know? So I love that you said that. And another thing that I really want to touch on is um, you talking about, you know, just having the right character, right? Like you may not necessarily be the most qualified or more skilled or whatever it may be, but making sure that you have the right heart posture. Yeah. There's a scripture about that. It's first Samuel 16, seven. And it says that, you know, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Yeah. And I'm just like, God, if you honor people based off their heart posture, not necessarily based off who they know, their skill sets, what they've accomplished, make sure I have the right character so that I'm able to sustain where you're taking me. Yeah. Because God forbid, God, you know, I get to where God has been calling me and then I fumble it because of my pride. Yeah. Because I'm not, you know, slow to speak. You yeah. know, on, or whatever it may be, like that would be the worst fumble, not because I wasn't skilled enough, but because I didn't have the right heart posture, yeah. God forbid. And that has been the prayer in this season around sustaining. Mm -hmm. So two things. One, on the first point you made, which a prayer I always say is, God, align my mind, my heart, and my actions to your will. Amen. And then the second thing around, you were saying something? About character. Character, okay. Mm -hmm. So something that God has really been placing on my heart, especially this year, is the difference between patience and long suffering. Mm. We think that they are the same thing. And we actually think patience is something that it's not. People think patience is the weight. Long suffering is the weight. Patience is your heart posture during the wait. Wow. And so I'm always constantly trying to test my heart posture because you can say that you're, you know, God, I'll wait. But how are you during that way? Are you like, God, are you going to hurry up? Like, right. what's going on? Or, you know what, God, forget about it. You, you forgot about me. Now I'm angry. Now I'm bitter. Mm -hmm. Like, having a good heart posture, having an open heart posture during the wait is what the true definition of patience is. Yeah. Patience is not actually the duration of the wait. That is long suffering. Patience so is good. your heart posture during the wait. And so I've really had to test myself because there's things even this year where I'm like, come on, God. <laughs> What's going on? Like, yeah. why are we behind on whatever it is? And again, God has just really put on my spirit that patience is the name of the game. And I think what I'm so excited about is the fact that what God has shown me in my professional life, he's also now teaching me these same lessons in my personal life. Mm. So if God already wrote the story, if I've seen him do that, and I've seen him bless me quickly, right? Mm. I've seen him take my hard work and produce fruit than in any other area of my life, whether it's relationships, whether it's friendships, family, you know, even just self-development, I know that I can rest yeah. knowing it's taken care of. And I'm just so glad that not only have I gone through it, but that I also have the heart to understand what I've gone through because it allows me to go from glory to glory because I know I don't have to be anxious or nervous about things. I use what has happened in my life around topicals to mirror what God can do Anywhere. In anywhere. And my friend always says, she's like, if God wouldn't just bless you in the professional, like that's not how he works. He right. doesn't just work in blessing you in one place. He wants to bless you in all Everywhere. areas. So you also, I think as women who are really successful dating or friendships, sometimes friendships and dating is really hard for us. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes I'll get down on myself and say like, you know, in certain areas of my life, it's like God forgot me or like it's not working the way I thought God was going to make it work. And she reminded me that he doesn't just bless you in one area. Right. Like we're humans and we think, oh, you can get this, but you can't get that. God is abundant. God said, I'm going to give you everything. everything. That is good. That blessed me. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay. So we always end the show with a prayer and then Thank you can close us out. Okay. Right. Lovely. Dear Heavenly Father, I come before you with a heart of gratitude. I just am overwhelmed by how you have designed life. Every morning that I wake up, every time I get to interact with people that you've called to your will, I'm inspired, I'm 
shaken. I'm, I feel your presence, Lord, as I get to sit in communion with just all of the people and places that you've designed. Father God, I thank you so much for the gift of following when we're called. I thank you, Father God, um, that your love drives out any anxiety. It drives out any fear. Again, I go back to gratitude so much here, Father God, because these things that we've discussed today, the plans you have for us are not of our own you know, thinking. These are things that you have ordained. You've written our story before we even knew what our story would be. Father God, I thank you that you continue to bless and protect and provide for God is my creative director. I pray that future seasons continue to bless people in ways that Buku can't even imagine. Father God, I pray that the production, the, the guests, the speakers that come on this show, Father God, that you use them. You use them to touch people's lives, to transform lives, Father God. I thank you so much for the gifts and talents you've given me, you've given Buku, you've given people in this room. I pray that you continue to bless them and you continue to make way for them, Father God. And I, I thank you that this isn't the end. This is just the beginning of conversations that draw people near to you. Continue to use us to draw people near to you, Father yeah. God. Use us as vessels. Use us as examples of what it looks like to faithfully follow you. Amen. We know that we're not perfect, but we want to be used by you. Thank you, Father God, for this fellowship. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Girl, I needed that. You are a blessing. Thank like, you. This is crazy. You are, thank you. No, I'm so thank happy. <laughs>